Hello, one and all, and welcome to the best music of 2017, and I'm fully aware that it's already so late into 2018, and I'm just now making a best of list, but last year's video came out around the same time, so I'm just sticking to tradition. The tradition I won't be sticking to is the length of last year's video. I mean, I don't even know why that thing was 30 minutes long. That was... Well, ridiculous, and it won't happen again. This video will be much more concise and to the point, so I can just get to showing you my favorite music instead of just talking about it. I mean, that's kind of the point of this video, right? And for the sake of cutting the length of this video, I will be cutting a category from the list. So, best compilation album, sorry you were short-lived, but sacrifices must be made. Well, if a compilation album really impresses me, I'll just put it in the best album list. And that being said, I am adding a new category, which in essence voids my efforts to shorten the length of the video, but you know what they say? Uh, one step forward and one step back, and whatever, let's just get into this. Just as last year and pretty much with any best of list, this is my opinion, chances are you might not agree with it, and that's okay, everyone's taste in music will differ, and just a disclaimer, I do listen to mostly electronic music. Not only electronic, there's a good amount of music in here that isn't, but the majority is. First up is my favorite artist of the year, and well, really, there's only one artist that meant anything this past year, and that's the Chainsmokers! They are just the most creative and original artists out there, each song is completely different from the last, and they're um, really good at music. Um, well, my mom likes them, so yeah, there's that. Mm, you really like the chain smokers. I love them. I'm just saying, you should probably listen to this more. I'm just, huh? this, this is probably a better choice. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't like the chain smokers. Oh, you don't? Yeah, and she's been listening nonstop to the album, and she loves it, and it isn't annoying when she plays it all the time. I like it too. Yeah. Next up is my favorite remixes of the year. At number three, we have Masayoshi Imori's remix of Radioactive by Anna Luno. Now, the original was already heavy hitting enough, but with Masayoshi Imori pulling his signature style onto the track, we get a song with a lot more bass and an almost suffocating atmosphere. All of Anna Luno's chopped vocals and varied percussion makes this one insanely easy to just fucking jam out to. <laughs> At second place, we have Wave Racer's remix of Carry On by Takei Maiza, featuring Killer Mike. I really hope I pronounced that name right. The original is already wacky enough with the melody running in the background to Takei Maiza's singing and rapping, but Wave Racer has managed to make the track all that more memorable. The industrial sounding percussion alongside the upbeat melody and chorus makes this entire track so weird while still being enjoyable to listen to. Finally, my favorite remix of the year is the autograph remix of Rockabye by Clean Bandit featuring Sean Paul and Anna Marie. Now, I already loved the original song, but with this remix, Autograph has managed to give this song an almost somber and intense tone. The drop itself is intense and plays with the original melody while sprinkling little cuts of the vocals all over the place. For me, the buildup in the second half of the song was done perfectly by layering the original vocals, vocal cuts, melody, and their own synths to make the payoff that much more satisfying. On its own, this song was already unique, especially when compared to other charting songs, but this remix really just heightens how comforting and delightful the track is. Next up, we have my favorite singles of the year, and kicking it off at 6th place is Maxed Out by Big Dope P. This song makes no sense. It repeats the exact same vocal sample for the entire track, has the same beat just on loop, and these random high-pitched samples just litter it all over the drop. But I love this song regardless. All that stuff I just listed could have gone so bad so easily, with it just being so repetitive, but the song keeps moving at such a fast clip, constantly adding and removing sounds to keep the listener engaged. <laughs> Number 5 is 22nd Century by East Ghost. East Ghost's signature bass line is put alongside these haunting vocals that just carry on for the entire song with whispers being peppered out throughout the drop. With its monotone and low melody, this track manages to leave you both disturbed and satisfied at the same time. Fourth place is Automaton by Robotaki. The track starts off with some synth wave melodies and synths until around the halfway point where it pretty much just drops you into this heavy hard drop with heavy mechanical like growls and 
machine like person samples and I'm really bad at describing this. Uh, but yeah, this song transports you into this feature where robots have become integral to society and takes you on a journey through all of its highs and lows. Next up is I Can't Feel My Face by Josh Pan and XNG at third place. This song has the tag Cowboy Trap on SoundCloud, and that is honestly an extremely fitting tag. The vocals at the beginning set up this down tempo and melancholy tone before the drop kicks in with this heavy guitar riff, supported by some small vocal cuts and percussion. I can feel my fucking face. In second place is Fourth Impact by Rez and Kid. This song is just evil from the onset. These sinister melodies and bass line with a drop that just punches you in the stomach. The title here is extremely fitting. Each listen feels like you're living through the end of the world. Impacto. Now for my favorite single of 2017, and it is Antigon by Habstrak and Dumbreski. The style of this track is on point. This house track shifts from a more relaxed club intro to a drop that takes both artists' artistic roots for some hard-ass bass house. The breakbeat style percussion and synthwave-esque melody only add to this drop with an incredible build. It's Next up is our new category, and it's my favorite video game soundtracks of the year. I figured since I mostly upload content about games, it'd only be fitting for me to at least talk about my favorite soundtracks from all that I played in the past year. And kicking it off is the Gorogoa OST by Joel Corleats. I've already ranted about how much I love this game in my previous video, but a lot of that enjoyment I got playing was only heightened by its amazing soundtrack. Its ambient tracks provide this atmosphere which comforts and relaxes you and encourages you to keep going. The melodies perfectly mesh into one another and change up depending on the tone the game is taking, adding an almost mystical quality to the entire experience. My favorite track off the OST is Devotion. In fifth is the Super Mario Odyssey OST. This soundtrack takes on so many styles and genres just like the kingdoms in the game, with each track fitting perfectly with the kingdom it came from. You got these guitars and flutes dancing around in the Saiyan Kingdom, this out of nowhere funky surf rock track from the Woody Kingdom, of course the loud, brash, and upbeat horns of the Metro Kingdom alongside the song's signature anthem, and this intense atmospheric track in Bowser's Kingdom that just does a great job of hyping you up for the final battle. And of course, those are just my highlights. There's a plethora of great ass songs in here that never get old, especially as you spend hours searching for that last moon. My favorite track off of it is Bowser's Kingdom theme. Fourth is Pyre Soundtrack by Darren Corb. Now, I haven't played Pyre yet, but I have listened to its soundtrack and god damn is it good. This soundtrack builds up this world of a broken underworld and does a great job giving the player this feeling of a grand, treacherous journey with this deep bass line and percussion. And I haven't even played the game yet. My favorite track off of it is Surviving Exile. In third is Danganronpa v 3 soundtrack by Masafumi Takada. Now, Masafumi Takada has done a great job of building up on his previous soundtracks in the Danganronpa series by remixing old songs and giving them a new touch, but in here so many tracks are just completely new. The tone of the soundtrack is incredibly funky, especially in the investigation tracks where it's so pleasing to listen to, yet gives a sense of urgency for the player to finish investigating the murders of their classmates. That alongside the infamous techno club tracks from the class trials and the haunting ambient tracks from the more melancholy parts of the game make this soundtrack great from all aspects. My favorite song off of it is Climax Reasoning V3, and while the previous Climax Reasoning tracks were also amazing, this one is a step up in my opinion with this tragic piano melody underlining the entire thing. In second place is the Cuphead OST by Christopher Madigan, another game I haven't played but have heard the soundtrack for and it is astounding. 
Like, every song captures that big band jazz from the 1930s and gives incredible life and enthusiasm to the entire game. Which, I mean, I haven't played yet, but even just watching gameplay with those amazing horns and piano just egging the player on to survive just a little bit longer. And even besides that, this soundtrack is great to listen to on its own. My favorite is High C Hijinks. And for my favorite soundtrack of 2017, it's the Persona 5 OST by Shoji Maguro. Holy crap, this soundtrack encapsulates this entire heist and rebellion theme of the game perfectly. Despite playing for probably 40% of the game, I never got tired of listening to Last Surprise. All the boss themes were incredible, and those songs were just wandering around Tokyo are also great as hell. I should probably describe the soundtrack more than just call it great. Well. In a nutshell, this soundtrack is just pure fun, so many upbeat tunes with some amazing guitar work and percussion. The violins scattered around the soundtrack give the entire thing this grand feeling of an adventure. Going through this game, I found myself returning to specific places or lingering just to hear more of each of my favorite songs. You got your theme for when you're exploring Tokyo and it's funky and relaxing, and then the next day it's raining. Now it's the same song, but suddenly it's more down-tempo and somber to fit the more empty streets you find yourself running down. It's the game's reminder that while there's so much happening, just take a break, relax, and chill out. And then you're back in the palaces and the music's picking back up and you're on the final day of the heist and this is the, the big battle and the fucking guitars that you want and everything's picking up and I just really love this entire soundtrack. My favorite off of it is When Mother Was There. And up next is my favorite EPs of the year, and in 6th place, it is the Machines EP by We Are All Astronauts. This ambient EP is incredibly chill for the majority, while picking up these vocals and percussion to give the entire EP a cinematic feeling. The ringing melodies and chilling tone of this make it great to listen to whenever you just want to relax. My favorite track off of it is Violent Delights. In fifth is the Shadow Task EP by Pilot. This is an incredible synthwave EP with these melodies that worm their way into your head alongside these chords that keep layering themselves on top of each other when the songs kick into full gear. You work your way down these tracks from the more upbeat Kane, with its electric guitar with some high notes being blasted to match it, all the way down to Clova with its heavier focus on melody with a more relaxed bass, and since that fade in now, my favorite track off of it is Data. In fourth place is Rina by Rina Sawayama. The production on each track here is stellar, with Rina Sawayama showcasing some amazing vocal work. The entire EP brings up memories of 90s pop with its style and instrumentation. Rina's voice is a delight, especially in the second part of Tunnel Vision. And each song tackles many different topics, with my favorite being Cyber Stockholm Syndrome, where Rina sings about love and relationships in the modern age where most communication is done online. In third place is Skeletons by Crywolf. Crywolf's vocal performance is at an all-time high in this EP. Every song here is incredibly powerful with detailed production all over. This EP songs are mixed together so that they transition seamlessly when you listen to the album in order. Crywolf layers instruments upon vocals upon background vocals to create this soundscape where he's at his most vulnerable, singing about love, devotion, fears of being incomplete and not good enough for your significant other, and it's all so amazing. Each song's high point is like the dictionary definition of powerful, and each one manages to take your breath away. My favorite off of it is Windswept. Now, I had a hard time deciding between first and second. It was so hard to put one above the other for me. But in the end, my second favorite EP of the year is Escapism 3 by Sam Gelaitri. Gelaitri, that, fuck, whatever. The title of this EP is incredibly fitting. Each song just whisks you away to some other world. Sam Gelaitri has been establishing himself as an amazing trap and electronic artist with his previous escapism installments, and this is by far his best. The diverse instrumentation and styles like the strings and vocals and acres and hollow percussion in jungle waters makes it feel like you're literally going on a journey around the world. The detail here is amazing, with my favorite track being Acres. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. 
Now, on to my favorite EP. In first place is Denzel Curry's 13. He just keeps getting better and better. Here, the production is much more gritty and heavy than his 2016 album Imperial, which I also loved. The bass is deep and commanding in every song, even in Bloodshed, where it's a bit toned down, it's still prevalent in the background, and Denzel Curry's rapping is as amazing as ever. He manages to rap his bars at a consistent rhythm while having this substantial breath control to enunciate every syllable for the listener to understand. There's never a break in his performance, and his writing matches that quality. My favorite song off of it is Equalizer featuring Ronnie J. Now we're into the final act of this, my favorite albums of the year, and starting it at number 6 is I See You by The XX. For me, The XX albums get better as they're released, my least favorite album was their first one, while this one is my favorite. There's a ton more production being put into each track and making it feel a lot more complete in my opinion such as Dangerous with the slick bass line and horns blaring at the cornice to these hollow note samples and On Hold, they all support the vocal performances nicely. My favorites off of this are A Violent Noise and On Hold. In fifth place is Intervals by Quok. Quok's style comes out full force in this album, assaulting the listener with these hard electronic pieces, underlined by soothing piano melodies that all spread the full range of melancholy and relax to angry and energetic. Each song makes the listener feel like they're wandering through this yard full of factors with each mechanical beat and growl, haunting the listener as they wander down this dark alley with people watching them from the shadows. My favorites off this one are Lucid and 40 Minutes Before You Leave. In fourth place is Iteration by Calm Trues. This is my favorite synthwave album of the year. Calm Trues' production quality is at its best here with each track presenting layers upon layers of melodies, random samples, glitch sound effects, and off-kilter percussion. Man, the melodies in this album are incredible, providing the listener with this soundscape of an 80s arcade with the TV playing in the background, only this arcade is fucking glitching through the layers of reality, and there isn't even an arcade, this was a horrible analogy. But the point is, this album is a journey through what seems like the future and past at the same time, and if that's not the point of Synthwave, I don't know what is. My favorites off the album are Ariso Stacy, Vacuum, and Surfio. In third place is Panama Papers by Runners Club 95. This is by far my favorite Vaporwave album of the year, with the entire album being composed of so many diverse tracks. You start at the beginning with Afternoon with these slow down vocals and relaxed bass line, then kick up a bit later with Pastel Skies which sounds like Heaven's theme song. Then you get some nice bass, more sampled vocals, alongside some more upbeat melodies in Isla Nublar before getting into this enthusiastic album in Made For You. This entire album is covered by this umbrella of synths and instruments which gave it a hugely tropical and surreal tone. My favorites include Pastel Skies, Isla Nublar, and Post School Sadness. Now onto our runner-up in its first opus by Sinjin Hawk. This was the first I'd even heard of Sinjin Hawk, and that was probably the case for most of the people who stumble upon this record. This album is jam-packed with energetic club beats with fast tempo, clipped high-pitched vocal samples, and bouncy bass. The album is incredibly innovative with each track managing to feel new and fresh while not stepping over the line into being so experimental it doesn't sound appealing. There are so many different sounds, instruments, and synths used here. It Honestly ridiculous. My favorites off this album are They Can't Love You, Nail Gun, and Onset. Now for the grand finale, my favorite album of 2017, but first, some honorable mentions for anything that did make the cut for the top six. Look at You by 66, amazing club track, and I'm not even sure why I'm so addicted to it. Sophie released two amazing singles this year, with my favorite of the two being Pony Boy, with its extremely hard-hitting bass. She, by Vinyl 98, I love the vocal cuts on the song. Bops, Not Your Average Cup of Tea EP, my favorite drum and bass of the year. Celadon City, Somehow We'll Get Through This, this album is like the soundtrack to the best day ever. Akira by Ikali and Crane, amazing track made in a dream collab between two of my favorite trap artists. Orbiter's self-titled EP, incredibly funky and energetic EP, just wish it was longer. Sorcerer's The Crowning of the Fire King, one of my favorite metal albums of the year, with the other being C colon 
backslash Windows backslash Media by WASD. Didn't know metal covers of old Windows MIDIs could sound so good. Everything Black by Unlike Pluto featuring Mike Taylor. The vocals and beat in here make for an extremely danceable song. Slow Magic's Float. Every single song of this album has Slow Magic's signature upbeat style mixed in perfectly. The Night in the Woods OST by Alec Kalauka. Perfect music for jumping on a bunch of power lines and questioning life. Songs to Save the Universe by Dr. Ghost, my favorite breakcore album of the year. The Yakuza Zero OST, this is probably the funkiest and most fun soundtrack of the year, fits the 90s era setting perfectly. Girls High Fantasy EP, this thing is a percussion orgy that will worm its beat into your head. Drew Lou's A Moment in Time EP, Drew Lou's amazing trap and electronic style is here at its best. Queen by Sorcery, which would have made it onto the top six singles list if it was still up. Virtual Self, self-titled EP. I love the melodies and synths used in here. It really makes you feel like you're actually in some virtual world. Ascension by Groceries, a fantastic Mallsoft album that makes you feel like you're in some video game shopping on a summer day. Without Her, a relaxing track perfect for late night car rides. And finally, Daniel Caesar's Fruitian. Daniel's vocals are heaven to listen to in this great laid-back and relaxing R&B album. And now for my favorite album of this year, and it is Take Me Apart by Kalela. At this point, I think I'll just expect to love anything Kalela puts out, because that's been the case for all her previous work. Here, the production quality is ridiculously high, with so many producers working on each track. Each song has so many layered beats, textures, and of course vocals provided by Kalela, and they are bliss to listen to. Her vocal talent is expertly showcased in this album as she sings about the pains of breaking up and the freedom and joy involved with fighting new love. The styles that play in this album are all over the place. Just take one of my favorite tracks off the album, Take Me Apart, where the song goes from this R&B ballad to a more alternative and electronic soundscape before it breaks down in the second part into the 70s style pop song with the synths and background vocals to support it before setting back into its alternative R&B home. This entire album is a blessing, one I've been playing non-stop since it came out, and one I will keep on playing well into 2018. My favorite tracks include Take Me Apart, Let Me Know, Truth or Dare, and On and On. And that finally concludes my favorite music of 2017. Ah, in the end, my efforts to make this video shorter than last year's didn't really help all that much. But, well, I guess at least this one isn't three minutes long. Links to everything mentioned can be found in the description. Thank you for watching, and the next Attacking My Steam library is in the works and will be out soon, so be sure to watch for that when it comes out.